Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make this patriotic card, and I made it for one of my good friends who just became an American citizen. So yay, Glenn, I'm so proud of you! And I wanted to make her a card that um, I thought really fit her personality, and she likes kind of primitive stuff and kind of old-fashioned looking things, and so I went with kind of this, um, this fairly simple card, but with the detailing of embossing and some metallic, and I just thought she would really enjoy this. So I'm going to show you how to make it too. And since this is a stamp school video, we're going to be really diving into embossing and I'll show you how to get that look in case you've been curious about um, embossing folders, what they do, and also some other ways to emboss if you don't have embossing folders or a die cutting machine. The stamps I'm using, um, I bought these last year at the Heirloom Stamp Show. They're by Technique Junkies and this is the first time I've used them. I love this pattern. I loved the distressed flags. I love Americana, um, but I just couldn't think of the right thing to make with them until um, my friend Glenna got naturalized as an American citizen and I'm like, this is totally what I'm going to use these for. So um, the set is S294 Patriotic Frag Fragments, if you're interested. They're not sponsoring this, they don't even know I'm doing the video, but um, but that's the stamp I used, and they're really high quality, so um, so go forth and shop if you want to. You have my permission. Oh, so I wanted to show you how I cut my paper, and what I'm using is a thicker cardstock. It is... Um, Michael's Recollection. I think it's 110 or 120 pound. It's the really thick one. It comes in a really heavy um, package and it costs a little more than the regular ones. I think it's like $12 a pack of 100 sheets, but you know, use a coupon that goes on sale and stuff. So the way I cut it was I cut it the hot dog way, right in half, so four and a quarter inches, and then I scored one piece at five and a half. So I've got an A2 size card. It's just got to fold on the other side, and I've misplaced my bone folder. Hmm, it's probably, you guys can probably see it, and you're probably like, Lindsay, it's under your bottle of glue, or whatever. Well, so I'll pretend I have a bone folder, and I'm creasing it with that. That will give you a nice sharp crease. And then um, I just cut about a eh, two piece, two inch, two and a quarter inch piece um, off of the end of this. And um, we're going to use this for our stamping and for a little more embossing. So the first thing that's neat about this card is we're actually going to do some embossing right on the card front. And um, then we're also going to do some embossing of this tiny little strip of paper. So I'm going to show you how this works in case you've never done uh, dry embossing before with an embossing folder. So these are embossing folders. They are plastic folders. They're fairly rigid. And um, you open them up and you put your paper inside. So I, I like this kind of starburst stripey design. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to put my um, folded card. I'm going to put it so that the embossing is going to be showing up right on, right along the bottom. If you, I don't know if you can really see that until we emboss it, but so I'm going to have all these raised and indented areas down here. So then I'm going to close it, but I'm keeping the back of the card out because I don't want any bumps on there where I'm going to write. So this is a die cutting machine. This is a one I prefer. This is called a Big Shot, but you may have um, any any machine that does like that cranks dies through will work for this. You just need to know what you need for a sandwich. And a sandwich refers to the plates and the cutting pads that go through your machine. So with my this is really this is an old Big Shot too. This is the original platform that came with it because I like it better for um, embossing folders. I'm going to put a cutting pad down. Then I'm going to put my embossing folder with my paper. And then I'm going to put this other cutting pad on top. And I usually do all this stuff over my die cutting area. And now I'm cranking. Can you see the crank there? I'm just turning this crank. The Big Shot, I really like it because you don't have to crank it as many times to get it go to go through your machine, which is really helpful. So then when I take this out and we open up our embossing folder, we've got this really cool design, this raised design on our card. And then we can enhance that with ink or we can leave it just the way it is. Now to just emboss a piece of paper, like I'm going to do here with this scrap, I'm just going to put it in my folder. I'm going to put it in the middle tray. If you have like a symmetrical design or you have a pattern that you want to line up, just you know put it in how you want it, and then close it. And that goes right on top of your cutting pad. Put another cutting pad on top. Oh, you know what? Here's a quick tip. Put it folder side in first. That will, um, in case something's not lined up just right, it just makes less wear and tear on your um, on your folders, make them last longer. I've never had any of my embossing folders um, get damaged this way, and like this is one of the oldest ones I have. Um, I, they should last you a lifetime, I think. And there we've got this one with this nice design. This is a really useful one. This one is by Provocraft. I don't know the name of it, but it's kind of like a military star design. I think it's really classic, and I don't think it's going to go out of style. And that's what I look for in an embossing folder. So I'm not going to set this aside. And one thing I really like to do when I'm using my embossing folders is adding some ink. So I'm going to use 
these two ink pads, just dye ink. You can use your mementos. I just realized that Lawn Fawn is coming out with reinkers now, so I don't have to be so stingy <laughs> with my Lawn Fawn inks. But this is cranberry, which is kind of like a like a muted crimson, and I'm just gonna rub over it like that. So there you can see like the, the raised design. All right, and then I'm gonna take, I'm gonna set that aside so I don't get ink on the inside of my card or the back of it. Then I'm going to take my star piece and I'm going to do some of this deep sea, which is really a navy, a nice denim -y navy color. See, isn't that pretty? You could also emboss colored cardstock and like swipe a little um, white paint over it. That would be really pretty. Another thing I want to mention when I'm using embossed pieces, I like to have my hot glue gun. It's Ah, it's right here. I like to have my hot glue gun ready to adhere the pieces because sometimes adhesive doesn't work very well because it it won't see you all these bumps. It doesn't want to doesn't have enough to grab onto when you use like a foam dot or double sided tape. So I like to use hot glue for that. Plus it gives it a little dimension, which is nice. Okay, so I've got those two pieces. I'm going to set these aside. I want to show you a third way to emboss. Actually, it's kind of like three and a, one and a half more ways to emboss. It's the same idea, but two different um, techniques. So one thing I like to do is, um, and this is what I had before we all had um, embossing machines, we would use brass stencils um, or texture plates. Now you can run these texture plates through your die cutting machine with a squishy pad, but I gotta tell you, check this out, it's really easy to do it without, without that. So if I just hold this down or you can tape it. Um, I tried washi tape actually to tape it earlier, but it wasn't strong enough and it moved. So I just like to hold it down. I rub the back of my um, paper with a little bit of wax paper and it just helps my embossing tool glide. And then you can either use a tool like this, which is meant to use on these texture plates because then you can rub it all in whatever direction. But for something like this, it's just stripes. It's really easy to use just a ball and stylus. You might have these if you ever did any tool painting because you'd use these to make dots or if you ever did any um, brass, brass stencil work or whatnot. But see, you just run that, run that along the grooves. You could also use your scoring board for this if you have one. And you can get a really cool uh, stamped, uh, striped motif this way. And so there, it's not as deep as an emboss, but it's still really nice. The other thing I want to show you is using a brass stencil. And I'll show you on this one because I already did this one. So I've got one little motif there I've inked, but I'll just do one, um, do one plain. So you want to work on the reverse side of your paper if you're using a texture plate and a stylus or a brass stencil. And generally, if you have a light box, that is really helpful because um, then you can see exactly where your stencil is. I'm going to kind of have to um, fidget around a little bit to find it. I'll just do that. That might help me find my design. Oops. And then you want to start with your biggest ball and stencil, ball and stylus rather. And just kind of, um, if you have a light box, you can see where the brass stencil is and you can see where to put your tool. But if not, then just kind of feel around and just um, rub your stencil inside the grooves. And then you switch to a smaller size and you can outline and get a little more definition. I did all my twin baby announcements with this with like, it's, I know I have that stencil over there somewhere. It's over. Oh shoot, it's a baby carriage right here. I did all my twin um, newborn announcements with that. I hand embossed all of them. Then after I had twins, I did not have that kind of time on my hands. <laughs> okay, so if you can see that, you get a nice subtle, of course, take a little more time with that, but you get a lovely subtle look. And this technique is used a lot in parchment crafting. So if you like to use vellum, um, you can, it's a really great, really great technique to know. And you can hit it with a little bit of ink if you want to make it stand out a little bit more, whatever you want to do. It's just a really versatile thing. And if you have these brass stencils around, you know, give them a try. You can even do it with some plastic stencils too. Just be careful not to damage your plastic stencils because, um, you know, you could warp them pretty easily. Okay, now we're going to do a little stamping and I've got my uh, squishy pad here. It's just a piece of fun foam, nothing fancy. And I'm going to use, um, oh wait, before I do that, why don't I ink, I should ink up that. Well, I can do that later. I could do that. I don't need to do that right now. I want to stamp a couple of these awesome little flag stamps and you can either use your watercolor brush markers to do this or an ink pad since it is not very um, detailed. I've got an area for red and an area for blue. It's not too tricky just to kind of eyeball it and just ink the red part red, the stripes red, and the stars blue. Just be careful. You don't want to contaminate your ink pad. I like to live dangerously though. There we go. 
Oops, I did get a little overlap, but I think that's going to be all right. Before I stamp it down, I feel like there's a little spot that doesn't have ink on there in the middle there. Before I stamp it down, I like to breathe on it. Just because if any of that ink dried in the time I was putting the first color down to when I put the second color down, it's going to moisten it up again and make it release. And notice, I don't just stamp it and lift it. I let, I give it time for the ink to transfer from the rubber onto my paper. Then there we go. And you can see there where I got a little too far with the blue, but I still think it looks fine. It's, it's rustic and that's totally all right. Or you can just stamp it again if it's, if it bothers you. Doesn't bother me. It's snowing right now, by the way. We're supposed to get 8 to 12 inches of snow. It's totally going to be a snow day tomorrow. I hope that um, that we have power. If not, we do have a generator, but I like to um, I like to be able to get online. <laughs> I won't be able to get online if we don't have power. Um, all right, then we've got this one. I'm going to stamp it down there. I'm just giving myself enough room that I can cut it out after with my scissors. Nothing fancy. And then I've got this little slogan that just says red, white, and blue. I really should have been a little neater with that. Don't be so sloppy. Oh my gosh. A little too sloppy there. But you saw you saw the good card already get done. <laughs> All right. So we'll just stamp this over here. All right. And then I'm going to grab my scrap paper too. And I'm just going to ink those stripes that I did with a texture plate. And I have a brown ink pad right here for just such an occasion. There we go. See, so whenever you hit anything with the ink, it really um, brings out your embossed design. And then if you want to soften any of it, you can just rub it over with a blending tool. These homemade ones are my favorite. They're just a cosmetic sponge. You know the makeup wedges that you use to put your foundation on? Um, you just fold one in half, stick a little hot glue in a bottle cap, shove those ends in, and Bob's your uncle, you got a ink blender for like hardly any money because you can get 20 of the foam wedgies at... Um, Foam wedgies, that doesn't sound good, uh, at the Dollar Tree for a buck, so you can't get your wedgies for a buck, folks. You can't beat that. Um, all right, I'm just going to look at my first card I made just to see how much of that brown I had. I didn't have too much. I had about, oh, not too, uh, maybe three quarters of an inch there, so I'm just going to trim that off and set that aside. I'm not really measuring anything here. I am just kind of winging it because I'm going to be showing you some distressing techniques as well that kind of totally make the winging it perfect. And sometimes you don't feel like going over to your paper cutter, you don't feel like fussing with this or fussing with that, and I totally understand that. Um, I find that if I use long bladed shears, like these office supply scissors, these are just like, you know, cheapo office supply. Well, I want enough. they're cheap. I paid 69 cents for them because I got them at Martin's, but I don't know if they're really cheap or not. They're, uh, they're really great for this because it's easy to get a straw, uh, straight line when you have a long blade like that. These probably aren't cheap at all. They're Eagle brand office scissors. They probably were much more than that. But when I saw them for 69 cents at Martin's, I bought probably 15 pair because I teach classes and for some reason I can't seem to keep scissors around. There's some crazy organizing people that say don't keep duplicates of anything, but I'm like, if I had one pair of scissors, I would never be able to cut anything ever because they would always be lost. So... That's what I need. I need, I probably have a hundred pairs of scissors in this house and I can only like put my hands on three at any given time. All right. So this is a edge distressor. I've had this for a long time. Um, I think different companies make them. This is a Heidi Swap one. You probably can't buy it anymore. I think those, um, maybe if you had like an old uh, thread cutter, it seems like an old like sewing thread cutters, you know, that's exactly what it reminds me of. Or you can use the edge of scissors. If you can find a pair of scissors, this is a little more dangerous. You know, just kind of rough it up with the edge of your scissors. It, it works exactly the same. It's just, this is, you know, if my kids were going to do this, I'd be giving them the little edge distressor because there's no way you can get your finger on that blade to cut yourself. Because trust me, if there was a way, I would have done it. Um, so either way, a pair of scissors works exactly the same. This is just a little safer, and I'd rather not chop my fingers off in front of you fine folks. <laughs> stamp school, what not to do when stamp school goes wrong. All right, and did I distress this part? I don't think I distressed that. I don't feel like I cut that all that straight either. Let me just line it up in my grid. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little, it's a little cockeyed. Let's just, uh, let's just fix that a little bit. Using the old eyeball tool, right? We eyeball it. There we go. And then to all of these pieces, what well, I'm just going to kind of wipe off any linty fuzz from my distressing. 
and I am going to ink the edges with my ink pad. This is a, uh, this is vintage photo distress ink. Probably a lot of you guys have that. If you have any distress ink, I think it's probably the most popular color. It's one of the first ones. Um, but it's just kind of a nice soft brown for, um, like distressing edges of photo mats. A lot of people, um, got this to use in scrapbooking just to kind of get yourself a little more vintagey looking. So with a sponge, I just get a much softer look. And if I want to really darken those edges, and I actually like to even kind of wrinkle it up a little bit. My fingers are getting filthy. So the reason why I covered the back and the inside of my card with paper is because I got them completely inky. So you don't have to do that if you're careful. But you know, I think it kind of looks nice and it can help you use up some of your paper stash if you're a paper hoarder like I am. All right, I think I think we're good. Oh, well, maybe a little ink on the edges of that. See, this isn't a really long card to make. I'm making it here in real time. Um, it's fun. I think it's fun to use embossing folders because they're they're a tool. So once you buy it, you can use it a million times and it doesn't cost you another penny. So that's why I, I love tools like that. You can use over and over again without it costing you any more money. Okay, so oh, I really should wash my hands, but I'm not gonna. I like to live dangerously. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is glue this panel right up there, and oh, I do want to ink that. I forgot. I'll ink that a little bit. Did I distress that one? Oh, I did distress it on the original card. I'll distress that too. I think I might have to trim one edge a little bit shorter. I think I'm a little long on one edge. I can always do that after. Just get a little distressing in there. I might just have to re-distress an edge. Not a big deal. Let's get a little bit of that on there. How are we doing for time? We're doing pretty good. All right, now let's see. Are we really going to be too far over? I need to trim about an eighth of an inch off. So I look and I see which side is uglier, and that's the side I trim off. Really scientific there. Hmm. If I do that, you know, I always do that whenever I'm cutting something. It's like, okay, what do I want to get rid of? What looks worse? And that's what I trim. All right, I'm using hot glue because, like I said, these bumpy edges are not going to take double-sided tape very well because there's not enough for it to hang on to. And I just know I'm not going to be sending somebody a DIY card activity if I use hot glue. It'll be stuck for sure. And you got a little bit of time, like maybe 10 seconds, to shove that into place just right. And I want to put this along the bottom. I'm probably going to be a little long on that if that one was, so but that's all right. I'll just glue that down and trim it off. Love my hot glue. You really can't beat it for like such a bargain. It's such a bargain of an adhesive and it really sticks good. Actually, I don't know if I need to trim that at all. That looks pretty good. Hmm. I might have been crooked on the whole cut. Um, and then this, which I, again, did not distress, my little red, white, and blue tag. I love Americana. It's just, I don't know, something about, something about, I think I like nautical and Americana. I don't know, that, that look is really growing on me for some reason lately. Again, we're going to do the Distress Ink. If you have, you can let it go a little crazy on there too. Let it, uh, you know, let it get some wrinkles in it, you know, have fun with it. Let it be, look really, really fun. I really want to darken up those edges a little bit more. I always feel like, um, I don't know, <laughs> like I'm going to race. I will get this card done before anyone. There we go, and stick that right down there. Is that where I put it? I don't even know if that, yeah, that's just where I put it on the other one. Sometimes I forget, it's like I made this card like 20 minutes ago and yet I can't remember where I put everything. And I am going to put this bigger flag up top. And I like to overlap things, I like to overlap elements, so I'm actually gonna put this one overlapping that middle seam a little bit. I just think it's a little bit more flattering. And the one thing, and I, I wonder if it's gonna do it on this one, I did it on the other one, the ink is seeped through because sometimes when you're embossing cardstock the cardstock will crack and so you can kind of see little spots of ink so I'm going to be um, lining these papers lining this paper with another pattern paper um, but that's all right because I'm going to use that to my advantage and actually put a brad through here when I do a brad I simply use my uh, paper piercer tool and I put my card down on a foam mat and I poke my holes so it makes it much easier for that brad to go through. And then I'm going to take a couple pieces of paper and glue them to the, um, well the back, well my back didn't get too inky so I guess I don't really need to do that but right on the inside here I will glue this piece of paper down to cover it. 
and then uh, you pr probably get by with it with a double stick tape just because it's not um, it's not too rough it's not too bumpy but the hot glue does it in a trick and then I can put this on the back one final thing I wanted to do on this was to add a little bit of shimmer and I'm just gonna use this um, this uh, gelato crayon it's just like a gold um, kind of like a gel, water soluble gel crayon. I'm just kind of putting it around on some of these raised edges. It's just going to give it kind of a vintage look. Any edge that I have is kind of fair game. And then once I've got the uh, the color down, because it does kind of want to um, grab some of these edges and, and kind of ball up, so I'm just kind of going around and smoothing it and just giving it more of a vintage look. I think it's pretty. It adds a little bit of a shimmer. And um, and that's really all you have to do to make this card. I hope you enjoyed this. And if so, please um, give me a thumbs up and subscribe and share it with your friends. One thing I did to this card that I didn't do um, to the one I just showed you is I just took a couple strips of washi tape and made a frame on the inside. If you want a little place to write but you don't want as much space, it helps fill up the space if you just want to write a short sentiment. Um, but that's completely up to you if you want to do that or not. I hope you enjoyed this Stamp School episode. And until next time, happy crafting.